I may even go further. It depends on uh, what's going on. Let's see if I can make a start of the second disc, but uh, we'll see. some more striders and uh, I, just to speed things up a bit I'm going to uh, start using some berserks guys uh, we'll use this one we just picked up a moment ago when we leveled up holy spear scorching spear of fire as you can see it's pretty much identical to the uh, to the blast chip that we used on the Nanyan swarm uh, earlier oh we got a level up as well nice uh, yeah, the, that, the, it's a spiritual berserk, the, uh, the Holy Spear, and all, spirit, all spiritual berserks have the advantage of hitting every enemy on screen, uh, regardless of where they are. So, uh, yeah, very useful. Gash once again showing that uh, he's a very friendly chappy. Just leave the worm to die. Yeah, that's really nice, Mr. Gash. Yeah, that was another secret, guys. Hidden in plain sight, really. I mean, uh, I got that on my first playthrough of this game many, many, many years ago. But I didn't, fi I didn't find the shield chip one until like six or seven playthroughs later. So it's it's incredible just how much you can completely miss with this game if you're not uh, complete, not, not like watching all the time. Yeah, this is the secret worm family passage. Names getting longer all the time. This gives us a Mola, which is an incredibly useful little addition at this stage of the game. Um, oh, while I'm here, I might as well just talk you through the, the pause menu uh, during flight mode. You've got five things that you can select here. I mean, you've also got your status, your HP, your BP, uh, current and max. Then it shows you your XP gauge and how much money you've got, the dine there, as well as your laser rank at the bottom. But uh, yeah, these five cursors, that's your setting menu, very boring, nothing to show you there. That's your map cursor, uh, allows you to access the field map or to access the world map. Uh, your defeated monster list, which I'll just give you a quick show here. You see you've got four different categories, although we've only met the, uh, the mutated monsters so far. But as you can see, everything that you've fought uh, shows up in this list. And it, uh, the little icons here show you what kind of enemy it is. Green is a normal enemy, yellow is a like a mid-boss, uh, and red, uh, in the case of the Arachnoth, if you remember, is a, a proper boss, a complete boss. So there you go, and you can go into them and have a look at them and ooh, zoom in and out. Grr. Uh, it gives you a little bit of details on them there and how much experience and all that and just random stuff like length and height and width of all things. I mean, crikey, man. Yeah, that's your defeated monster list. Um, we got the dragon window, which allows us to have a look at our dragon. Uh, I'll tell you more about this later on, because uh, there's nothing much interesting to do there at the moment. And then your item list, and you've got items that can be sold, which are all of your healing items and all the junk you pick up. Uh, you've got your quest items, as you can see there, there's like the D units we've been picking up. And if you get like books and stuff that you find, they'll show up in here. Um, your berserks, you can browse through all of your berserks there and uh, see them there. And uh, this one here is your gun attachments. Uh, and as you can see, there, there's the Mola that we just found. Uh, so we 
can equip that, and uh, that puts our power up by 20% on the gun, which is very useful. As we go through the game, we'll pick up many, many more uh, gun attachments uh, that'll help us as we go along. There's only so many, and some of them are definitely more useful than others. here for now. We've got a fight. Gash is very, uh, very afraid there. Ow! But, uh, this monster isn't really all that tricky goes on its back here, in its green zone, is a nice, big, glowing, weak spot. Boom! And it all falls into the whirlpool. There we go, we've got a great fight. Lovely. 80 experience, that's pretty good, that. That's not bad. And another treasure chest. Now... Is it? Ah, there we go. This is what we're looking for now. だし、あれが終わっす。ああ。だけど、水脈への入り口が旧世紀の遺物に塞がれてるな。Can yeah, we'll get that safe point in a minute. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, we've been around most of the area here. So, we'll go figure. Oh, we're starting at the front. That's not good. Yeah. Ew. We managed to get all the way around without getting attacked. That's fantastic. I'll just show you what happens if you kill the queen, guys. Uh, as you can see, though, she's an anti-laser uh, enemy. Now, that's probably the first time you've seen that cursor. The enemies can have anti-laser or anti-gun. Um, obviously, they take they take either highly reduced damage or no damage at all from that type of attack. So if we were to attack the queen with lasers, it wouldn't do very much. But we'll uh, blow her away with the gun. And all the other Nanians just run away. And as you can see there, we got like next to nothing for our XP and uh, dine. So it's, it's with those guys, it's always much better to... Uh, Kill everything if you can. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Wanton destruction. Yeah. That ruin has probably stood there for thousands upon thousands and thousands of years, and we've just come along and blown it up for the hell of it. Now, these little plants, guys. Seem like a waste of time what I'm doing here, but uh Ah, there it is. One of them eventually drops that. Which I will show you what it does here. If you watch the green dots. There we go, they've gone red. That effectively means that it's like a, an auto it's like cruise control basically for the dragon. It allows us to maintain a, a current speed. Uh Without having to hold down the uh, the forward button all the time. Not all that useful at the moment, but we need it for later on. That's gonna come back in like the fourth disc, I think it is. It's gonna be useful. Yum. 
into the light and the blue ruins next area as you can see quite a bit bigger got a couple of scripted battles here that always occur firstly with the strider scavengers yeah, it's a mixed group you see We've got the red zone back from the striders in the red zone front from the uh, the Nanyans. Ow! Stop doing that, you little freaks. Uh, you can sit here and like pick, pick them off one at a time, but I always find it easier just to uh, use one of these and just take them all out at once. And we got an excellent rank. More experience. Yeah, and this is the other one of the uh, the two scripted battles. Well, a new enemy this time though, which is quite good. It's the Hoppers. Oh, this isn't a good place to start. But what you see is they've uh, they've got a weak spot on their uh, rear. But uh, as they're all pointing in different directions, you can't actually um, flip. They keep flipping around like that, so things change. But yeah, as, as they're all facing in different directions, you can't uh, you can't target them all at once from one direction. Yeah, as you can see, there's nothing much to those guys. Just stay out of the way. It's it's pretty much like most of the enemies here. If you stay uh, away from their danger zones uh, and take advantage of weak spots, then battles go by quite quickly, which is nice because in some RPGs they just take forever. I don't know if you guys have ever played a game called uh, Tales of Symphonia, but I found that game so annoying, uh, simply for its random battles. You know. Yeah, got another plunger. Move. Ow! I'm gonna have to heal in a second. These little attacks are starting to slowly build up. Yeah, we level up to level 7. This is good. Right, we'll just uh, heal here. Good thing is you can use your berserks out of battle. And uh, there we go, we're back on full health. Marvelous. Right, now the ruins in the center there is where we're going to be heading next, those over there. Uh, but what we've got to do first is we've got to find a way to clear the uh, clear the entrance way into the ruins because it's covered in sand at the moment, so we can't get in. Uh, yeah. So we've got to find a way to clear the sand. If you really want to, you can actually go up to the ruins and select it, and after a while. Gash will actually turn around and say, oh, oh, um, yeah, we need to clear this sand and there, there, sh there should be some ruins that can control the wind nearby. Yeah, how, how he knows all this stuff is beyond me, I don't know. He's like some sort of walking encyclopedia for random trivia of the desert. But uh, it's all useful, I suppose, whilst we're wandering around doing stuff. Here's one of them. We've got to break it. Like everything in this game, we want to activate it, we smash it to pieces. 